on today's show. Order books open for the Volkswagen ID3 electric car in Europe and 10,000 pre-order reservations are made in just one day. Nissan's battery supplier says it's developed a next generation battery cell that will enter production next year with an energy density of 300 watt hours per kilogram and certain parts of the internet break when Tesla's autopilot gets a starring role in a Pornhub video. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean energy and transportation. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get on with it. After years and years of concept cars and promises, Volkswagen finally opened the order books this week for the ID3, its first long range electric car, with the launch edition of the same, the ID3 first, amassing 10,000 pre order deposits in just one day. Destined to be a Europe only model, it will come with a starting price of less than 30,000 euro, be offered with a choice of 45, 58 or 77 kilowatt hour battery packs. Range will be between 330 kilometers and 550 kilometers, depending on the battery. Deliveries will begin next summer. When BMW's long-range all-electric iNext XUV hits the market in 2021, it will be sold as standard with the Level 3 autonomous driving system. That's one which requires the driver to remain alert and ready to take over if required. But while customers will only get Level 3, BMW confirmed this week that it plans to launch a test fleet of 500 iNexts around the world with full Level 5 capability around the same time. These vehicles will not only help BMW test Level 4 and Level 5 operation ahead of a production launch, but help legislators define new rules for autonomous vehicles. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk took to Twitter this week to shift forward Tesla's expected timeline for full self-driving, noting that he believed Tesla could have gamed an autopilot trip from Los Angeles to New York last year. Musk said that when Tesla finally demonstrates such a feat later this, it'll be in a form that means, quote, everyone with Tesla full self-driving will be able to do it too. At the Tesla Investor Day earlier this year, Musk had said that full autonomy would be feature complete by the end of this year, with customers likely to get it by the end of next. His recent comment suggests they could get it a lot sooner. The Hyundai Kona Electric may only be one year old and still pretty hard to get in many markets around the world due to production volume issues caused by limited battery supply from LG Chem. But for the 2020 model year, the Kona Electric will still be getting a few tweaks. In Europe, this includes a brand new three-phase 11 kilowatt onboard charger that should dramatically cut charging times. Because three-phase power is more common in homes in Europe, the new charger is a smart move that could slash charging times dramatically for customers. Last week on this show, I told you that Tesla had plans to secure more than 2.7 billion US dollars through a combined sale of both stock and debt. This week, although it was first reported last, we learned that Tesla would raise another $2 billion on top of this thanks to Fiat Chrysler. And that's because Tesla is working with FCA to pool their joint fleet emissions and fuel economy figures to help FCA avoid hefty fines in Europe for failing to meet these targets. It's a little like Tesla selling ZEV credits in California and will certainly help Tesla's balance sheet. Mercedes-Benz has officially begun production of its first EQ branded vehicle this week, the 2020 EQC SUV. At the same time, Mercedes-Benz opened the order books for European customers. And I should note that that's actually for car orders, not just putting a deposit down to get a place in line. That's already happened with Benz selling out of its 2020 model year allocation back in February. The first customer deliveries of the EQC are expected in Europe presently, but yet there's still no firm launch date for other markets. Cruise, the Silicon Valley startup that's now part of General Motors, announced a big 1.5 billion US dollar cash injection this week from existing investors, including T. Rowe Price and SoftBank. 
the investment pushed the firm's valuation to $19 billion. And while Cruise is still in its development phase, this extra cash injection should help it keep on track to launch a fleet of fully autonomous Chevrolet Bolt EVs by the end of this year. With so many companies scrambling to be the first to market, it's going to be quite the race. Back in March at the Geneva Motor Show, Mercedes-Benz unveiled the concept EQV all-electric premium MPV. And since that point, Benz says it's been busy taking part in some pretty extensive testing. This week, it announced the EQV has just completed its first public drive to Barcelona. While it's still a concept car at this stage, Benz also confirmed that it will unveil a series production model based on the EQV concept at the Frankfurt Motor Show in September. We don't know when production will begin, but we'll let you know when we do. Envision AESC, the company born out of Nissan's own battery business that's now owned by Chinese company Envision, but which still supplies batteries to Nissan, has launched a brand new fifth generation 811 electric car battery cell with an energy density of 300 watt hours per kilogram. It will enter production next year. Eight parts nickel, one part cobalt, and one part manganese, 811 is considered by many manufacturers to be the next big step in battery cell evolution. It's no wonder why so many companies, including LG Chem and SK Innovation, are rushing to bring cells to market. The current US president might have a bit of a love affair for what he calls beautiful clean coal, but the rest of the world has been working pretty hard to wean itself off the stuff. And this week, the UK passed a milestone on that journey, with the national grid going an entire week without burning a single piece of coal for electricity generation. The last time the UK was coal-free for a whole week? Well, that was 1882, before power grid energy distribution was really a thing. It's a well-known fact that governments around the world prop up the fossil fuel industry with massive subsidies and tax breaks, and now a new report published by the IMF shows annual global fossil fuel subsidies have just crossed the $5 trillion mark for the first time. While you're recovering from that figure, I'll tell you that the IMF report also notes that implementing fair pricing back in 2015, that means taking into account the actual costs of producing those fossil fuels, would have lowered carbon emissions by 28% by now, reducing fossil fuel deaths by 46%. Something has to change. And finally, ever since the early days of Tesla Autopilot, we've seen people ignore all official guidance on how to properly use the system. Reading books, falling asleep at the wheel, and a whole manner of other things which apparently now includes making porn videos. Yep, apparently a popular porn site this week published a raunchy video in which a couple were doing the dirty while the car was driving itself along. Yes, it's a real video, apparently. No, I haven't seen it, nor do I want to. But please, people, keep it in your pants and keep your eyes on the road and the bedroom stuff for the bedroom. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, send it our way. We always love hearing from you. Make sure you hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on a next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? You can get your home, your business and your car, if it plugs in, running on 100% zero emissions electrons. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. <music>